take a few minutes before Nathan preaches today to pray. And the word the Lord gave me as we worshiped was, the next seven to ten days will determine the future of our nation for decades to come. More so than the election in November. The next seven to ten days are more important than the election in November. God calls us in Scripture to pray for our leaders and pray for kings and all who are in authority. We do that in our intercessory groups, but sometimes I believe that when the Lord says, my house is to be a house of prayer, that we need to be doing that as a people. I'm not talking about who you should vote for <laughs> or anything like that. But what happens in the next seven to ten days is so crucial, so vital. I, I believe, in my heart, I believe the outcome of it will affect our, our religious liberty for years to come. The outcome, of, uh, the outcome of this is going to affect our freedoms for years to come. And we need to be praying for what's going on right now in our nation, in the political world. The Lord also reminded me how appropriate this is for the body of Christ. Do you realize, how many of you realize that the stage was set for the American Revolution in the first great awakening in 1735 to, and through about 1745. And the values that were birthed in that revival established the values on which our nation was founded. And that the American Revolution was fueled from the pulpits in America. Preachers drove that revolution. And so would you just join me in prayer for a few minutes for what, for what comes in the next few days? This is a call for urgency. There, yeah, it's an urgent call. So Lord, we lift up our nation to you right now. As a people, God, in this anointing that's on us right now, we lift up our nation to you. God, this nation that we love, this people, Lord, that we love, and we pray, Lord, for a spirit of repentance on, on, on our nation, God, that you would so reveal your glory in this nation that multitudes would fall on their faces in repentance before you and say, God, I want you. God, I'm so tired of this filth, I want you. God, we ask for your mercy upon our political process. God, that righteousness would prevail, that conviction would prevail. God, I pray for your saints, Lord, those we call evangelicals. <laughs> in particular, that there would be discernment, that there would be a hearing of your spirit, that there'd be informed thinking, God, that we would make as a people a wise decision, one authored by your throne, O oh Lord, but based in righteousness, God. Lord, we repent for being a selfish people, for, for wanting political leaders who will give to us and give to us and do things for us. God, we... I, if everybody agrees with me, I just cry out for righteousness in leadership, yes. Amen. for holiness in leadership. Yes. God, for a leadership that looks to you. Yes. God, for humility, even at a national level. Yes. Break our hearts as a people, Lord, yes. Yes. and let your hand rest on this election. In Jesus' name. A little hard to step out of that. <sighs> <clears throat> One other thing on that one, let the judgment begin with the house of God. And I have to say that because I know that's what, and that's a good thing. It's not a bad judgment. Judgment is not bad. But the house of God in this nation needs to repent. The entire house, not just this house, the house of God. Anyone who thinks they're part of the body of Christ. And I just, I'm asking for a, a complete thing of, of repentance, forgiveness, and then a full release of hearing the true heart of God. So, Lord, that's where I am right now. I'm just lifting that up to you because it does begin with the house of God. And Jesus, the houses of God need to repent. <laughs> that's all I can say. That's all you let me say. So, thank Actually, you, Actually, the last line, the Lord just gave this to me. I just want to say it because I want to say it because this is going to go out online. You all know the scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray... I'll heal their nation. Well, behind humble themselves is repentance. And what the Lord is saying to me right now is, if my people will repent, I will save their nation. So let's get it right, church. Let's get it right.